Dalton Kincaid and Khalil Shakir have big games in round one of the playoffs. Are they the future of the Buffalo Bills? All that and more in this episode of the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuk. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That is linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. I am your host, Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. Joining me today, as always, is Kate Majuk. You can follow her on Twitter at Kate Majuk. Uh, she does fantastic work at Behind the Seal Curtain, Yahoo, Pro Football Focus. So check out all of her work. On today's show, we're going to be talking about some of the more notable performances from round one of the playoffs, the Monday edition, two Monday games, which gotta say kate i kind of liked a little bit i think the nfl is going to start to lean into two playoff games on monday i want to start with bill Steelers. um we knew going into this game there was going to be no gabe davis so they were going to have to rely on some other pass catchers in this one and buffalo was fine dalton kincaid three for 59 in the touchdown uh khalil shakir three for 31 in a touchdown i kind of like both guys a lot going forward Here's the thing, Marcus, you look at Buffalo's contract situation and Gabe Davis going to hit free agency. There is no way. I think after what we've seen from this cast and crew of weapons here that we're actually going to see Gabe Davis get a second contract here no. with the bills. He's going to hit free agency in 2024. We know what Gabe Davis is. He's a great explosive playmaker great asset to play deep and and play out wide but i think he's kind of a, a more one dimensional asset than the bills would probably like i think what they like about khalil shakir and what they like about dalton kincaid is i, I think these players both offer them a lot of versatility that i think is very very favorable to the kind of offense they want that isn't necessarily josh allen playing hero ball uh, we're going to talk about Shakir and Kincaid a lot. I just want to say one quick thing on Gabe Davis. Now, I, I, I don't really have any sources in the NFL. I just happen to know some people that know some people that know some people. Uh, and Josh Allen is really, really close with Gabe Davis and has really been pushing to get Gabe Davis to sign a contract back in Buffalo. We'll, we'll see. So I'm not completely ruling out the idea that Gabe Davis is back. But I got to say, I kind of just like the offense better when he's not on the field. And I think it's because, and you mentioned the versatility, I think it's because Kincaid and Shakir are both so good after the catch that it just makes this offense a little bit more dynamic. And then one of the differences between like Shakir and Davis is that Shakir can move all, all around in the formation. You can play him outside as an X. You can bring him in the slot. He can make plays all over where Gabe Davis is really primarily an outside vertical threat receiver. I just wonder like is Buffalo – going forward, just going to lean on these two guys in their passing attack. And we haven't even mentioned Stefan Diggs, Kate, who a lot of weird things coming out with Stefan Diggs this year. Uh, the last what eight games of the season basically did nothing in this game. Seven for 52. I even wonder like, is Stefan Diggs a lock to be back here next year? There are a lot of questions I think in this Buffalo Bills receiving court, but Marcus, I think like the one thing that I want to point out again with Gabe Davis here is that Gabe Davis, I think almost kind of feeds into this Josh Allen hero ball kind of mentality. I do think that from a coaching perspective, you look at Khalil Shakir, you look at Dalton Cade, both of whom can make plays after the catch. And I do think that that plays into some of Josh Allen's ball security issues, right? Getting some of these higher probability completions over the middle of the field, allowing wide receivers to make plays after the catch, allowing your tight ends to make plays after the catch. That will play into the ball security issue, which has obviously been a huge factor for Josh Allen and the Bills long-term, not just this season. 
Uh, you know, obviously I think it came to a head this year, but I do think that these two players kind of fit probably what would be the smartest way for this team to play football with Josh Allen. Obviously you're still going to keep some of those explosive plays. You're still going to, you're, you're still going to feature that as a part of Josh Allen's game because you'd be mm -hmm. a fool not to, but that can't be the main structure of the offense is chuck it up in the air and hope Gabe Davis comes down yeah. with the ball. Cause I don't think he's reliable enough, a wide receiver. I, I agree. Uh, a couple of things on Khalil Shakir over the last four games, Kate, 230 yards. He scored the touchdown in this game. Um, he he's never going to be the number one receiver, but it does feel like the the tr confidence and the trust that is growing with Josh Allen there. You're, it's just evident. Like the play that he made yesterday to score the touchdown, that was in a big situation down in the red zone. They needed a score there to kind of put the Steelers away, and he made the play. It just and against Miami, bunch of big plays in that Miami game to help them win the division. He's probably someone that I am looking to buy this offseason because I would not be surprised at all if he's just the locked and loaded number two receiver on a team that's going to score a bunch of points every week. And again, that kind of monstrous play here that we saw from Khalil Shakir that really just kind of put put the Steelers in the bag, right? That was a play after the catch that you yes. – it was absolutely – Phenomenal. For those of you who haven't seen it, the the contact balance, the stability that Khalil Shakir showed despite, uh, you know, initiating some contact almost went down and just pops back up into the air and runs and takes it for a touchdown. It was a phenomenal play. But again, I think that kind of plays into, you know, just what they can do to better protect yep. the ball. I really like Shakir. He's, you know, a, a speedy enough guy. Uh, that I, again, I think kind of plays into this offensive dynamic that seems to be suiting Josh Allen pretty well. Uh, last thing here on Buffalo before we move on, uh, Dalton Kincaid here, his, here are his performances. The last three weeks, four for 87 against new England, seven for 84 against the dolphins, and then three for 59 and a touchdown against the Steelers. Um, the last month or so, he's just been on an absolute tear. And my thought process going into the offseason is Sam Laporta is tight end one. Dalton Kincaid is tight end two for me in Dynasty. I I'm willing to put both of those rookies at number one and number two in my Dynasty spots. I'm a little bit less bullish on Kincaid, not because of the situation or not because of the prospect, but more because of the situation. Now, Let's look at the wide receiver ADP really quickly before we move on. I want you to tell me which of these values you best like uh, at the wide receiver position. Stefan Diggs, wide receiver 12. Gabe Davis, wide receiver 49. Khalil Shakir, wide receiver 59. It's got to be Shakir, it's right? Shakir, it's Shakir, Diggs, Davis for me in that order. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I mean, his price is going to go up a little bit considering how he's played the last couple of weeks. But even if he goes up to wide receiver 50, I'm all in because he's a great fit in this offense and he's playing with a good quarterback. And there could just be a bunch of available targets with Gabe Davis potentially leaving. I think there's a chance that Dawson Knox can get cut because he has not lived up to his contract. Um, go out by Khalil Shakir. Uh, and Dalton Kincaid, if you want to pay up for a really young, dynamic tight end, you can do that as well. Uh, all right, Kate, let's talk about the other side of this game, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, not a great one from the offensive side of the ball, but I want to look ahead to 2024 and the values of George Pickens and Deontay Johnson next. This episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. At the start of the new year, every small business owner is asking themselves the same question, What's the one move that I can make that'll take my business to the next level? LinkedIn Jobs knows that your success all depends on the team that you surround yourself with. That's why LinkedIn Jobs has created the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire 
Hiring is easy when you have this many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small business owners get a qualified candidate within just 24 hours. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn also knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats, it might not even have the time or the resources to hire. Thankfully, with LinkedIn, that process is so quick and easy. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown NFL. That is linkedin.com slash lockdown NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Kate, I want to talk about your Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, obviously a rough game uh, to lose. Now, I will say the receivers I thought played okay. George Pickens, five for 50 on 11 targets, did have the fumble, made an outstanding uh, catch in the middle of the field to kind of extend that game. Deontay Johnson, four for 48 and a touchdown. After a year of not catching any touchdowns in 2022, bounced back nicely. But I want your thoughts on how do we value these receivers moving forward Considering one, I don't think their future in Pittsburgh is a hundred percent known. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if one of these guys gets moved. And two, what the quarterback situation looks like right now. I have a lot of hesitancy in investing in these wide receivers right now. Like obviously, Marcus, there is a ton of talent, and it feels like game in, game out, there's a million plays that are left on the field for these these both of these wide receivers, obviously Deontay Johnson, I think much more of a reliable every down type wide receiver. George Pickens offers this element of explosive playmaking. I mean, this was not like, it, it didn't feel like a great season for George Pickens, but end of season, a hundred, uh, 1,190 receiving yards, five touchdowns, ranked set, uh, 16th in the league in receiving yards, 14th and explosive receiving plays second in the league in yards per reception. This was a great season for George Pickens, but Marcus, I think the biggest question mark is the quarterback position for me in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously toward the end of the season, the team did bench Kenny Pickett in favor of Mason Rudolph. Once he was healthy from the injury, he didn't end up making a return to the lineup with the way that Mason Rudolph was playing, which I think is very reasonable, but Knowing the Steelers organization, I also find it really hard to believe that they're not going to give their former first round pick another chance, especially considering the firing of Matt Canada as offensive coordinator. You're going to give him, I think, a little bit of time to, you know, play with a new offensive coordinator, play in a new system, see if this new offensive coordinator, whoever that may be, can get something out of your first round pick. The Steelers are a very, very loyal organization. And we know that now if it's Kenny Pickett and they're going to make that commitment to Kenny Pickett, which obviously we're not going to, you know, know anytime soon, but I think that seems to be, if, if I can make a bet, it would be that they're sticking with Pickett. Is that getting Rudolph in a battle probably, right? Like they bring Rudolph back and they just battle it out in training camp. Like, I, I just don't see a world uh, where they don't give Pickett at least another shot. And if Pickett's the guy and they're going to give him a, a shot, I think that bodes really poorly for these wide receivers. And Marcus, you mentioned it's not even a lock that these guys are going to be playing in Pittsburgh and maybe a change of scenery would be a good thing. Uh, if I had to guess, it seems like the team probably would be more keen on keeping Deontay Johnson, if I'm mm. totally mm. honest. Because looking at George Pickens and the upside, obviously he also has a lot left on his contract, right? He's a, a 22-year-old wide receiver, which feels absolutely insane. But there is a part of me that just wonders all of the distractions with George Pickens. I think we've heard 
a lot out of the locker room. Marcus, uh, before the show, you were you were sharing a report with me about the number of fines the Steelers have handed George yeah. Pickens this year. I, I got it right here. This from Jonathan Jones uh, at CBS Sports. He says that the he said a source says Pickens has been fined over two hundred thousand dollars this year by the NFL and the league uh, for conduct, um, for conduct, uh, detrimental to the team stuff in the locker room, things that he's done on the field. Um, I, it's crazy. So on top of that, I mean, I don't want to read too much into post game press conferences, but if you watched his yesterday, I don't think that was the most endearing, uh, to the Steelers. So it's tough. I, 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 I almost think it's the other way. I think Pickens is more likely to stay because, uh, he's, he's more talented than Deontay. Um, but Deont- cause Deontay's also had some of his stuff, uh, you know, the, the, not the effort on some of the plays, the blocking on some of the plays, uh, it's a really weird situation in Pittsburgh because both of these guys can be very useful fantasy players, but we have no idea what their long-term future looks like. And we have no idea who could be throwing them the ball. Like I- I'm on the same page as you though. Kate. Like if I had to bet right now, who's the week one starting quarterback for Pittsburgh, I would say probably Kenny Pickett. And if that is the answer, I don't really want either of these guys. Yeah. And I, Marcus, you look at the, the dynasty values. I don't think these, these guys are bad values. And just to be no, clear, no. I, like from a, a standpoint of which one of these wide receivers probably should you keep, it might actually be both. Cause I think they're both really talented is. wide yeah. receivers and they have very different skill sets, uh, which I, I think complement each other really well. Um, but George Pickens again, 22 years old. So maybe, maybe some of this stuff is going to be worked out, but again, the Steelers are a very kind of even keel organization. I I don't think they like a ton of the, the distractions, a ton of the, the narratives surrounding the, the comments of the wide receipt. Like I, that's just very not Pittsburgh, which makes me wonder, but you know, from a dynasty perspective, let's look at the the values here. George Pickens, wide receiver, thirty one, which it's not a bad price considering the upside. No, it's not. But it's not at all. I think the question is, you know, are you okay stashing George Pickens until we see a light at the end of the tunnel from a, a quarterback situation? If you're in need of a immediate producer, I don't know that George Pickens is the right guy to target in a trade. I just don't know if you can stash somebody that's that highly valued already. Um, right now, there's some been some recent trades on Dynasty League football uh, for George Pickens, including a 2024 first round pick. If you are the owner, let's say it's a late first round pick, would you move a late first round pick for George Pickens? This is a uh, great wide receiver class coming up, by the way. I would probably take the wide receiver. Uh, I'll t- I'll probably take the pick um, and roll, I'm there with roll you. the dice here. Yeah, I, I think I'm there with you as well. I, just because that's a very volatile situation right now in Pittsburgh for a lot of different reasons, a lot of unknown. And even this year, like you, there were some boom weeks for George Pickens. And then the following week, he would go over and would just crush your fantasy team. So well, Marcus, I think you I look, a little bit more stability. Look, go ahead. You look at the stats, right? So I mentioned his stats at the top of the show. Uh, that resulted in two finishes inside the top five for wide receivers. But outside of that, outside of those two top five finishes, he only had two other weeks all season long where he ranked as a top five or sorry, a top 12 scoring fantasy wide receiver on a week to week basis, wide receiver, 49 wide receiver, 37 wide receiver, 65 wide receiver, 53 wide receiver, 90 that those are the actual week to week finishes for George Pickens in between some of these boom games. You either get top five or you're losing your week. And I don't know that that circumstance is going to change. And to be honest, the boom weeks, I don't think are frequent enough to make it worth those dull weeks in between. Sure. Nine games this year when George Pickens had 50 or fewer yards. You Basically, you're getting nothing in those weeks. Um, he's, he's one of the most uh, difficult players to figure out in terms of your 
dynasty leagues. Curious to hear everybody's thoughts. What are you doing with these Steelers receivers? Let us know. Tweet us at Locked On Dynasty just to get a little bit better read on this situation. I want to go over to Tampa Bay because Tampa Bay, what a performance by them on Monday Night Football. They looked absolutely awesome. There is one player from that game that really stood out to me. We will get to him next. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. The NFL regular season is over, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That is $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use. There's so many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays. You can find bets in the new Explore tab. Or you can make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays. I love betting, like live betting the games. I One of my favorite things yesterday, we hit on a big uh, Dawson Knox first touchdown score at 17-1 to 1 on FanDuel. It's just so much fun. So, so many different ways to bet. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup with FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. We'd like to let you know that this show is brought to you by Jace Medical. I know we come to sports to escape some of the crazy realities of real life, but can we talk for just a minute about preparing for real life? According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of the worst flu season in over a decade. That is terrifying. I can't imagine a more helpless feeling than my son or my daughter getting sick while a supply chain issue kept them from the life-saving medication that they needed. Thankfully, we're going to be all right because of Jace Medical. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, such as respiratory infections, UTIs, skin infections, among others, stuff that could happen to any of us. So visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter. It will be reviewed by a board-certified physician, and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It has never been more important to be prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com and use offer code LOCKEDON to get $20 off your order. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. On tomorrow's show, Matt Williamson will be back uh, to help us answer some of your Twitter questions. So we would love to hear... Uh, what you guys want to talk about. Uh, again, Matt coming on the show today. It's going to be a regular guest every Wednesday. Excited to announce that. Uh, so you, if you've been missing Matt, he'll be back. Uh, okay, let's talk about Tampa Bay, Philadelphia. Nothing on the Philly side I want to talk about because that team is a dumpster fire right now. <laughs> I do want to mention Kate on. Um, if you <laughs> if you watch this game, Kate Otten might not be the guy that you thought we were going to talk about because he had three drops, including one that should have been a touchdown. But at the end of the day, did lead the team in targets uh, with 11, eight catches for 89 yards. I know the drops were awful, but he is now one of the tight ends that I want to grab this offseason because I do, I do really like him. I'm curious to hear that, Marcus, because I look at Kate Otten and look at his season, right? He ranked second among all NFL tight ends this year in terms of total routes run. Interestingly enough, ranked dead last among those 25, uh, among the 25 tight ends with 50 plus targets in terms of target rate on routes run. You look at uh, his yards per route run, per, uh, you know, production dead last among tight ends from a, a receiving metric standpoint, Marcus Kate at Otten's season was absolutely a forgettable one. So I want to hear, make your case for Kate Otten. Cause sure. I'm, I'm lost on this one. So when Tampa Bay drafted him in the fourth round of the 2022 draft, he was a, he was a blocker only coming out of Washington. I think he only had like 38 career receptions coming out of college or basically nothing. And Tampa Bay knew, Hey, this is a guy that we can plug and play. He's going to block for us right away. And then a couple of years down the road, he's going to develop into a receiver. Now his route tree isn't the most diverse. It's a lot of like sl- flats and slants and seam routes. And that's basically it. But what you saw is like some flashes of what he can do after the catch, especially in this game, 
pretty, pretty good after the catch. Um, and I just think now we're going to be going into year three with him, a pretty young tight end. I think he's going to, I think he's just 24 years old. Yes. I, he's the clear cut starter in Tampa. I thought he was significantly better at the end of the year. He looked awesome in the playoff game outside of the drops. He's just somebody at tight end 21 that I'm willing to draft and gamble on because I would not be surprised if he's the next Jake Ferguson or Trey McBride. He's got everything that you're looking for in terms of he's young, he's athletic, he's the clear-cut number number one tight end on his offense, and I kind of think this Tampa Bay offense is pretty good. This Tampa Bay offense is definitely something to monitor. And, I mean, you look at the the production here with Baker Mayfield, obviously, TBD, what – what is going to happen with this Baker? Maybe you'd be insane not to bring him back given the kind of year that they've had. You have Mike Evans, who's hitting free agency. That could be a very interesting spin. Again, I think you'd be out of your mind if you did not re-sign him to a long-term deal after, again, the the consistency. My only hesitation here with K. Dotton, and maybe this is me being a little bit finicky, we just didn't see a ton of growth, I think, overall from season one to season two. But I mean, your points are very valid raw coming out as a receiver. And this is kind of why we talk so often about why tight ends aren't necessarily expected to perform immediately when they hit mm -hmm. the league, because there's a certain level of nuance to, you know, learning both route trees expanding those route trees, pass blocking, run blocking. There are a lot of yep. different aspects yep. to the game of a tight end that it's it's complicated, right? And and it takes some NFL tight ends a bit longer to adjust to all these variants new variant varying nuances of of that aspect of the game. Now, you look at the value, right? And if we're sticking true to sort of that that notion that we're just going to grab a couple of late round tight ends and see which one of them hits Kate Otten tight end 21, not a bad value for nope. a 24 year old nope. tight end in, you know, I, I think a, a solid offense that maybe we haven't necessarily seen the upside, but you look around him and there are some other really intriguing names in a similar range. So I want to know Kate Otten or Isaiah likely. Isaiah likely. Kate Otten or Tucker Craft? Kate Otten. Kate Otten or Chigakonkwo? Kate Otten. All right. So you're a little so, bit higher uh, than than I probably but, would have expected. Kate Otten I mean, or Michael Mayer? Ooh. The fact Michael that it's Mayer. even close, I, I know, think, I tells you a lot. I'll say Michael Mayer. But, again, I'm... I'm my strategy this offseason is just to grab two or three of these guys and then just hope one of them hits. So honestly, if I was in a league where I didn't have maybe my tight end one was Dallas Goddard, right? And he's really kind of fallen off the last few months. I'm going out and trying to trade for both Isaiah Likely and K Don, or I'm going to try to go get Michael Mayer and K Don. I just want to grab multiple multiple of these guys as like lottery tickets because I'm pretty confident that one is going to bust out and be a productive guy next year. I like that. I, li I like lottery tickets. Who doesn't yeah. love to? It's to like a scratch off. A little right? scratch offs. Yeah. Exactly. I, lo I love a good scratchy. Kate, not Kate out is like one of those $5 scratch offs. So there you go. Uh, all right. That is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making locked on dynasty your first listen every single day. Again, on tomorrow's show, Matt Williamson, the GOAT, back on Locked on Dynasty. So make sure you check that out. Go follow the podcast wherever you get your podcasts. We are free and available on all platforms. Go check out the show on YouTube. Kate has been posting some awesome shorts on there. So go, go watch those. She does a fantastic job. Go follow her on Twitter, at Kate Maju. Check out her work at Yahoo, Behind the Steel Curtain, and Pro Football Focus. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosher, and we will see you right back here tomorrow.